February is coming to a close, and so is Black History Month, but before it's over, we need to continue our look at prominent black mixologists and bartending cocktail creators in today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews on Jalen Little and the Green Tea Gimlet. Hey there, hi there, ho there, my name is Michael, I'm a former bartender from the Kalamazoo area, and today we're continuing our look at important black mixologists, in this case a modern black mixologist by the name of Jalen Little for Black History Month. So today we're going to talk a little bit about her and make one of the cocktails that she produced for her Instagram, which is chiefly cocktail content, called a green tea gimlet. So to start off, let's talk a little bit about Jalen. Jalen got her start in Rochester, New York, where she was born. Um, and really, she is a content creator. That is, I think, a as singular a term you can use without being too reductive. She has been a producer, a writer. She is currently a blogger. She works in mixology, in cooking. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, she's written some stuff. <laughs> She's been around, she's done a lot. And really where all of this gets started is back in 2010 or 2011 with a magazine called Soul Life. Jalen's living in Rochester and she ends up starting this magazine called Soul Life, which is a local art magazine that was meant to sort of highlight and pilot the careers of other artists in the area and sort of give them a platform to use that so that they could be seen. So that included things like running campaigns, doing photo shoots, hosting exclusive events, things that allowed, really allowed Jalen and everyone she worked with, as well as the artists of her town, to have a place to exist and be successful. Unfortunately, Soul Life is now defunct. I don't know when it went out of print, but since then, and with her you know, creating this project, Jalen has stuck with it and has managed to make not just an impressive brand, but really impressive and amazing content. Like I said, she's chiefly, uh, as far as her mixology content goes on Instagram, uh, Jalen Little, and her content's awesome. She does like one or two reels a day and all of the cocktails look amazing, sound amazing, taste amazing. She has a wonderful personality and she's really knowledgeable on what she does. It's just kind of intrinsic to everything she makes. Outside of that though, she actually also runs a website and I believe a food blog on like a separate food site, I think called like The Feed Feed, something along those lines. Her own website has a catalog of not just, uh, you know, drinks and cocktails, but um, food and food recipes that she's come up with and highlights. And uh, the same goes for her food blog on, again, I think the feed feed. I really should have looked into the, what the name of that website was. As far as the mixology side of things goes, which is what we're focusing on today, she focuses a bit on um, classic stuff and then modern versions of cocktails and some things that appear to be of her own creation or her own specifications for things. And that is what we are making today in the green tea gimlet, which we should get started on right now. So we're talking about a variation on a gin gimlet that Jalen came up with uh, as part of her regular workflow. And there's a couple things about her particular one that would make it different from what a gimlet is traditionally known as and different from a green tea gimlet, which is actually a pre-existing drink. There's a little bit of history I wanna break down here um, because it kind of sets the stage as to why Jalen's is a distinct thing and why it's worthy of mentioning. A gimlet is a combination of lime cordial and gin, something that came about as a result of the British Royal Navy in like the 16, 1700s having issues with scurvy wiping out most of their sailors. The British officers liked gin, lime cordial became the best and a common way to get vitamin C in the form of like a rectified lime juice onto ships and keeping people from dying. Eventually the two came together and it produced a cocktail. Typically speaking, it's extremely, you know, lime bitter, but with a balanced level of sweetness and sort of a, a kind of refreshing and super just like astringent like sense to it. They are delicious, but that is sort of the classic way of approaching it. Basically, a, 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 as if it were a martini, you can kind of think of it as. The modern approach to a gimlet is more in the line of a sour variation. So you would take gin, lime juice, and simple syrup, combine those, and boom, you have a gimlet. Technically speaking, it's not an inaccurate way to do it, but it's not using the same specialized ingredients as the classic version of it would. And that is the same thing here. Now the green tea gimlet comes about as a variation of that modern interpretation of a gimlet, and it uses a green tea infused gin and a citrus syrup. Now, I don't have any kind of specifications for that recipe. It appears in the Savory Cocktails book by Greg Henry, 
and I could not, for the life of me, find a copy of it anywhere that I could go and pick up on short notice. <laughs> we'll come back to that recipe as a whole um, at a later date when I have a chance to look into it a little bit more, but just know that that's where the idea originates. It's, it's an existing thing. Jalen's version is actually different in the sense that it is sort of leaning into the idea of how you would present a regular green tea, and her case in particular is accentuating a specialized product. Jalen makes her green tea gimlet with an alcoholic, a no ABV alcohol alternative called Ritual, who produces a non-alcoholic gin type sort of botanical distillate. I, a couple things about why we're not doing that today. Uh, number one, Ritual is not available in my area, not as a pickup thing or as a short notice delivery, um, which is kind of a shame because I wanted to try it for myself, but also B, uh, it might not even be good. <laughs> I've seen a lot of videos of people approaching this whole no ABV spirits thing in the past, and it seems like none of them are really accomplishing the same thing that actual spirits are. Um, not to say that they wouldn't still be good, but they're just not equivalent, and you'd have to play with them a lot to figure out how to make them work in classic cocktail recipes. So as a result, because I can't get it and it might not be a decent alternative, and the only alternative that I could find around me, which was seed lip, is like not the same thing that she was using. It's an entirely different idea. We're gonna stick with a foolproof recipe using the same spec that she uses in her video on it. Now that spec includes three ingredients, lime juice, honey syrup, and green tea gin. I use Svedka whenever I need to make an infusion. I think it's a very nice baseline gin with a strong juniper and like lemon peel notes. And that, you know, that accompanies just about any flavor you're gonna put in there well enough to do a good job. So this is a quarter cup of uh, green tea set into a full 750 ml bottle of gin for two hours and then straining the particulate off. And it produces a product that's unique and provides a flavor that you would not get elsewhere. So you're gonna need some of that and then you're also going to need uh, honey syrup, which is just a watered down version of honey that makes it pourable like a simple syrup would be. This one is a two to one and it's still a little thin. I think for um, what we're doing here today, a three to one I think is what most people would advise you use. Really the thing is that honey doesn't sweeten as, when you, once you've watered it down especially, it doesn't sweeten the same way as sugar does, it's not as potent, it's not as intense, um, and it's really providing an additional contextual flavor and mouthfeel as well, and you want to make sure you're embracing that as much as possible. So. Three to one is probably the best way to go. However, the thing about this spec for the green tea gimlet means that you can kind of use whatever you think is best, whatever approach you want to use, because it's not using a ton of this or the accompanying citrus that's balancing, which is lime. So Jalen's green tea gimlet is two ounces of green tea gin with half an ounce of honey syrup and half an ounce of lime juice, which is a pretty small three ounce drink, three, three and a half ounce drink after dilution. Um, and it seems to be balanced in a reasonable way to approach and allow the flavor of the green tea gin to be prevalent. Initially, I thought that that spec was built that way because she wanted to exemplify the green tea infusion of her ritual alcohol alternative. And I was thinking, oh, I'll just build it like a regular sour then. Two ounces of green tea gin, an ounce of lemon juice, and three quarters of an ounce of honey syrup. It was awful, it was bad. The honey syrup, like I said, isn't sweet enough to combat the full bitterness of an ounce of lime juice and also the tannic bitterness that comes from tea. So we're sticking with Jalen's spec and that's enough talking about it. Let's just make one. So I'm gonna start with uh, our honey component here. We need just a half an ounce of this into our shaker. Next up, we need a half an ounce of lime juice, which I think I should be able to get out of just one of these limes. And then finally, we need two ounces of our green tea gin. I think the nicer a green tea you use, the better here. I'm using Lipton green tea because it was actually one of the few things I could find at the store that wasn't like a flavored green tea or like a green tea chamomile blend or some other ridiculous flavored dumb thing. Go to a proper tea shop and get good green tea. <laughs> It'll go better. <laughs> We'll add some ice to this, shake it to chill and dilute, and then serve it into a coupe glass. As always, we're sticking with our one cube hole, one cube crack ethos. We will cap this up, bang it down, and give it a shake for 12 to 15 seconds to chill and dilute. Once we've got that done, we'll pull up a cocktail coupe here, and I'm gonna double strain this in to catch any ice chips. 
We'll pour it in like so. Once we've got our cocktail in there, we need to go ahead and add a garnish. And the garnish for this version of the green tea gimlet is some raspberries. That tick, the toothpick was already dirty. That was weird. We'll garnish this with a couple of raspberries. I'm gonna perch them up on the side like that because I don't have any long cocktail picks. And there we have it, a green tea gimlet. Alrighty, now that we've got that meat and our station cleaned up, let's go ahead and give this green tea gimlet a taste. Oh, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> On the nose, like as I was raising it, I got this smell of like fresh raspberries and, and the honey and tea coming, like the aromas of those coming off the drink. They blend perfectly. This thing, it, it smells like a good cup of tea or like a green tea cake with some jam on it. And it's, it's, it's just, it's really pleasant. It's, I think it's exactly what you would want a sour to be. If you were looking for something that was more than just like a regular old gin sour or a daisy or something like that, there's a cohesiveness to it that is just Excellent. <laughs> On the palate, it's definitely spirit forward. Um, I wonder if a more like palate friendly version of this would be to build it like a Earl Grey martini, um, where you have two ounces of your base spirit, an ounce of simple syrup, and then three quarters of an ounce of lime. I think that that maybe might kind of, you know, balance it a little bit more because it definitely is on the proof like the you know spirit forward and dry side of things but it's not unbalanced in that essence in fact i think it's kind of balanced in the way that you would find a regular cup of green tea to be balanced it's got this kind of subtle sweetness embracing the herbal quality of green tea with that kind of aroma and mouthfeel of honey mixed in and just a little bit of citrus to back it up because that is like just the right amount of green tea flavor that I want here. It's like it's bold. It's like right there, but it's not oversteep. It's not providing too much bitterness. It's lingering for the right amount of time. It's really, really nice. I will say use a better green tea than I did. Don't buy like a cheap Lipton green tea. Go to a place that sells decent tea and buy some like proper, like high quality green tea. <laughs> I went through most of a box of 20 tea bags of Lipton green tea. It cost me $2 and 50 cents. Um, and it tastes like it cost me $2 and 50 cents, but it's still getting the job done. And I can definitely see where a better tea would accomplish exactly what this is doing to a better degree. So while we're sipping on this, let's talk a little bit more about Jalen. Um, I mentioned her start as the producer and founder of the Soul Life magazine, which is really phen uh, phenomenal. That kind of starts her on this content, uh, content creation um, career she's running now. And that's really fucking cool. <laughs> because it's, it's interesting because like 2010, 2011, I mean, I, I, think, I think Twitter existed by that point and Instagram and Facebook are a thing and it's kind of this like starting point where it's before nowadays where social media is everywhere. It is super streamlined. It is super off the walls, crazy, overpopulated, oversaturated. And she's adapted this really cool, very physical media approach to things into really the, the necessary skills to be successful on the internet. And that's impressive. Because to do it during that time period means you're kind of a trendsetter. In fact, not kind of, you are a trendsetter. You figured out how to do this at a time when other people would struggle to do so, myself included. And that's phenomenal. <laughs> that's really, really cool. So I knew Jalen's name before uh, I uh, picked up my copy of Black Mixolence by Tamika Hall and Colin Asariapia. Um, but uh, she appears in it twice for two different cocktails, um, the uh, an Elderflower Gin Fizz and a Grapefruit Mimosa. And both of them are phenomenal, and I wanted to do either one of those, but I was thinking, oh, well, I'm pulling a lot of recipes from this book. Let's do something from, like, 
her page, her profile, something that was interesting and um, presented as like, a, oh, it doesn't need to be alcoholic kind of thing, which is cool. Additionally, I was doing some research um, on sort of Jalen's interest in uh, mixology and bartending. Um, a lot of it is very um, like home bartender focused. A lot of it is meant to be very easily followable and simple while still maintaining the rules that mixologists have made for themselves. Uh, that is to say rules, not mixologists. The rules that mixologists have made for themselves. It's really impressive. She's really pared it down to a, a very simple procedure using really, you know, readily available ingredients. It's it's impressive how how effectively she has taken on this entire industry and been like, yep, here, here's here's how you do this, here's how you make this, here's how you make this, here's an idea, here's a concept, here's a collaboration, here's some information about one that I thought was really cool. Here's some information about bitters. She was she was she had a little video explaining how to properly use bitters, you know, how to do a, a dash correctly, you know, with with gusto and with power, um, and it was just really fascinating. She explained it perfectly. I was like, this is this is amazing. This is this is good content for people who want to know how to bartend or make drinks at home. That's really really cool, and it's it, and it's funny. <laughs> I know I said the same thing about Colin Sariapia. Uh, it's funny because. Um, Jalen was a bartender for, I think what her fact on her website said was, uh, all of two weeks. <laughs> I believe the reason why was she said it was, it was just too fast in industry and she, she couldn't keep up and, and I mean, it's understandable. It is a really fast industry. I myself had to adjust to it once I got into it and I was like, okay, I can keep up with this, but fuck. <laughs> She, she ended up not, you know, not sticking with it, but that's fine, because, you know, she went on to do better things. And, um, it, and as she, she says on her website, it gave her an appreciation for what bartenders are capable of doing, which is really awesome. So that's our episode on Jalen Little and her green tea gimlet, which is delicious. I will likely be having several more of today because I actually have the day off of work, so I'm going to enjoy it. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. We have one more episode coming out into March uh, about um, Black History Month and Black Mixologists. Um, so keep an eye out for that. We will be doing another one. Uh, this, that one I actually will be on Tamika Hall and Black Mixolence. That episode was supposed to come out today, but um, I was doing research and I was like, hold on a second, I think I might have uh, a weird print of this book that isn't accurate. I need to look into this a little bit more, so. Still working on it, figuring it out, but that will come next, and I will hopefully see all of you there. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like and subscribe if you did, and remember, drink responsibly. Have a great rest of your day, and goodbye.